validity of vertebrobasilar insufficiency, VBI tests. VBI tests have long been considered an indirect method for assessing vertebral artery blood flow. They are typically employed to evaluate the openness or lack thereof of the arterial lumen by attempting to provoke temporary brainstem ischemic symptoms. Thiel and Ricks, 2005. Despite their common usage, however, the effectiveness of VBI tests as a reliable screening method for identifying patients at risk of cerebrovascular complications due to spinal manipulation has been widely debated. Various reviews of vertebral artery circulation research have yielded mixed findings regarding the physiological impact of these tests. Grant, 1996, Rivet, Milburn, and Chapel, 1998, Rivet, Sharples, and Milburn, 2000, Rivet et al., 2005, Di Fabio, 1999, Ernst, 2007, Quintadura et al., 2012. Adding to the controversy, both false positive and false negative test results have been documented. Bolton, Stick and Lord, 1989, Code et al., 1995, Lich et al., 1998, which raises questions about the diagnostic accuracy of these assessments. In a notable early case study, Bolton et al., 1989, used digital subtraction angiography to show that a patient with a known vertebral artery occlusion still tested negative on a VBI screen. Later, similar studies conducted by Thiel et al., 1994, and Licht et al., 1998, confirmed that these provocative tests could incorrectly produce positive results. More recently, research by Haldeman, Holbeck, and McGregor, 2002, and Westaway, Stratford, and Simons, 2003, has reported cases of vertebrobasilar insufficiency in which typical provocative maneuvers like end range rotation or extension failed to elicit any symptoms that might contraindicate cervical spine manipulation. Modern investigations into cervical spine motion and its effects on vertebral artery blood flow have used duplex ultrasound to measure oh. various parameters <clears throat> such as flow volume, oh velocity, and vascular resistance during positional testing. Licht et al., 1998, Yikai and Shijen, 1999, Rivet et al., 2000, Haynes, 2000, Johnson et al., 2000, Haynes, 2002, Mitchell, 2003, Zaina et al., 2003. Yet, findings from these studies have been inconsistent. Some suggest a reduction in these flow parameters during manipulation, while others report no significant change at all. Because of these inconsistent outcomes, numerous authors have raised concerns about the sensitivity and predictive value of VBI tests for assessing arterial patency. They question whether these procedures are valid tools for detecting alterations in cerebral circulation. Quinta Dura et al. 2012, Rivet et al. 2005, Westaway et al. 2003, Rivet et al. 2000, Di Fabio 1999, Litt et al. 1998, Cote et al. 1995. In contrast to this skepticism, Mitchell, 2007, pointed out that many of the studies failing to identify significant flow reductions had methodological issues. Out of the 20 studies he reviewed, seven had flawed designs in measuring blood flow dynamics. Moreover, only five studies focused on the fourth segment of the vertebral artery, where blood flow is most likely to be compromised, and none examined the third division. This reveals a gap in the literature showing a lack of detailed research into blood flow beyond the typical resistance points. Mitchell, 2003. In a later meta-analysis, Mitchell, 2009, supported earlier findings, concluding that full or prolonged contralateral cervical rotation most commonly resulted in compromised blood flow, particularly in the artery's fourth division. Oh. He also argued that sustained full range rotation remains the most dependable method currently available to evaluate the functional integrity of both the vertebrobasilar and collateral arterial systems. In summary, the lack of rigorously controlled studies measuring vertebral artery flow velocity during prolonged cervical rotation limits our understanding. Due to these research inconsistencies, spinal manipulation practitioners should not use current VBI test results as definitive evidence for or against cervical spine treatment. Instead, these findings should be regarded as a call for critical evaluation and careful clinical reasoning during pre-manipulative screening. Is there a reliable screening tool for VBI? At present, there is no universally accepted or consistently reliable tool for screening vertebrobasilar insufficiency. 
Childs et al. 2005, Puente Dura et al. 2012, Al-Sharani et al. 2014. Among available methods, the most trusted technique remains the provocative VBI test, specifically sustained full-range cervical rotation, Mitchell, 2009. Nevertheless, the aforementioned inconsistencies in the literature continue to cast doubt on the validity of these tests. Rivet et al., 2005, Mitchell, 2007. Given these limitations, researchers have suggested using duplex ultrasound as a way to monitor vertebral artery blood flow during testing. However, this equipment is not widely available or cost-effective in routine clinical practice. Rivet, 2001, Thiel and Ricks, 2005, Rivet et al., 2005, Al-Sharani et al., 2014. As an alternative to duplex ultrasound, some have advocated for the use of a Doppler velocimeter, a more accessible ultrasound device that can identify variations in vertebral artery blood flow during pretreatment evaluations. Haynes, 2002, Rivet, 2001. Furthermore, Mitchell, 2009, after reviewing extensive literature, endorsed the use of pulsed wave Doppler insinuation combined with color flow imaging as a dependable means of monitoring vascular responses during cervical rotation. Craniocervical Ligament Stability Testing Screening for craniocervical ligament integrity is crucial for patients who present with conditions known to compromise the cervical spine's ligamentous structures, such as rheumatoid arthritis, Down syndrome, or those with a history of cervical trauma like whiplash or hyperflexion injuries, Hing and Reed, 2004. Several tests have been developed for this purpose, including the sharp purser test, the anterior shear test, and distraction testing for the tectorial membrane, among others.